talk about the arrest of the leader of IPOR. How did you respond to that? Well, um, in Nigeria, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's not for me to tell the government to prepare itself because there's going to be a huge squawk when the truth about how Kanu was arrested, when the truth comes out. A nation is, people are alleging this and that and that. So that's one phase, whether Nigeria has acted outside international law. That's one issue. The second issue, however, has to do with um, uh, Kanu's uh, uh, conduct outside uh, the nation. We, there's been a level of hate rhetoric, which is, for me has been most unfortunate, issuing from Kanu outside. But for me, hate uh, rhetoric is an, a, is an issue which can only be judged by the laws of any nation. So we come back to the issue, was it right to have, for me, quote unquote, kidnapped? You can say intercepted as much as you want, but I think that Kanu was kidnapped and that is wrong internationally and it's wrong morally. Some critics have said that uh, the federal government was fast to arrest uh, Namdi Kanu, but when we look at uh, other issues like the bandits still ravaging the north west and some part of the northeast the kidnapping still ongoing and also the issue with the boko haram and you begin to ask that how are they so fast and so quick to arrest the situation with ipob and namdi kanu and the others are still being left to go unchecked yes. yes i'm glad you asked that question because that also goes to the heart of what the issue we began with why do some people say look let's go our way uh, the government cannot wash itself clean of what seems to me a kind of a, uh, comparative energy in pursuing the destabilizing quote-unquote forces in this nation. If I may take ourselves back, uh, maybe you remember once when I threw a challenge to uh, Buhari uh, and I said what I expect from a commander-in-chief, from a true leader. And this is, you know, early, you know, uh, in, the, in the sort of the malevolent activities of these groups. I say, what I expect, now that we've identified uh, those who are killing farmers and taking their farms, occupying their villages, is to issue an order, give a, a, a deadline, an ultimatum, say that, any uh, illegal occupant of any villages, farms, and so on, is given 48 hours to quit. After which, the entire, the almighty, the mightiest forces of this nation will be unleashed against them. Yeah, it was ignored. It's because I said so. Many other people have said so in different forms. But I'm coalescing, you know, challenges which have been thrown to this government say, just show leadership where it is essential. And so when years later, a head of state comes out and says, we will respond to these people in the language they understand. Now that is what I had expected him to say years ago, at the very beginning of the insurgency of the cattle, uh, people, especially as it was clear they were organized. And their leadership, the Mayeti Allah, their leadership should have been arrested ages ago, long before iPod was declared a terrorist organization. I have allied myself with those like Autumn and others who said that Mayeti Allah should have been declared long before then a terrorist organization. And the evidence was there. A state governor passed a law for the protection of its own people and their productive means, their livelihood, their very dignity. And a group got up and said, if you don't rescind that law, we'll show you. You haven't seen anything yet. This is not an anonymous statement on the internet. It was not fake news. The leadership of Mehti Allah actually threatened that government and have continued, have proceeded 
to put their money where their mouth is. Nothing has happened to them. We have not seen the same energy, the same deductive organizational slithery mounted against these people. I'm not aware that even one of them has ever been called for questioning. And how would you advise the federal government to move forward? Uh, talking about all this, now you've uh, identified some pitfalls in the way that the arrest of Namdi Kanu has been handled and also the way the DSS raided Sunday Bull's house. For Namdi Kanu, for starters, how would you advise the federal government to move forward in terms of his trial and other things that will come up after now? To answer that kind of question, we have to ask ourselves, what is the position mentally, spiritually, uh, economically, politically? What's the, what's the state of mind, the collective state of mind of a vast section of this nation at the moment? And that state of mind is best described as distrust total distrust. This government has earned itself, rightly or wrongly, that's for the government, that side to you know, decide, but anybody who's telling this government that the people of this nation still trust it, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the government believes that, it's really <laughs> plunging this nation further into the abyss. So if, when you have this level of distrust, which would be denied, I know. There's only one thing to do, I think, to, uh, to try and win the trust back of the people. And in political terms, it's called government of national unity as an interim measure, that's all. Interim measure, especially towards the next election, uh, in order to have also a continuing confab you know, among those who execute policies, in order to also regain, um, of course basically to regain the sense of participation, of involvement of the people. I, I know it's a very hard pill to swallow, but as I said, it's a kind of as an interim thing. During that process, you will structurally examine the Constitution. Okay, I know they're tinkering with it here, they're tinkering with it there, but then we've been going through that ages. There have been constitutional review committees you know, under various regimes. And sit down, uh, admit your inadequacy, because this has become glaring over years, even before the last election, as I've said over and over again, spoken intimately, you know, very privately and very frankly to members of the government and the ruling party. Yeah. And uh, the, the distrust is too deep. And I, I believe that it's only uh, a confab which operates through a government of national unity, it's an interim measure, uh, which can actually uh, just suggest, offer a sliver of hope for the continuity of this nation. So much damage has been done over the past few years, a lot of damage. I mean, it's visceral, it's spiritual, uh, and it's pragmatic. Let me just ask this question uh, on a final note. Namdi Kanu, the leader of IPOB, arrested. Sunday Bu, um, taking a stand to protect his people in somewhere in the West, in Oyo State, Ibadan, has been declared wanted. What do you think will happen next? Do you see a situation where we'll have more Sunday Igbohus, more Namdekanus arising from the West, the East, the South? We already have them. They exist inside, within, and they ex exist outside. Why do you think the security people are chasing the telephone uh, numbers? Using uh, who are the backers? Uh, we're going to deal with the, those who are backing them. We're going to go through their iPod, iPad, iMam, uh, to, you know, and see who they've been communicating with. The next thing you know, they'll be picking, picking people off the street because the, the numbers on their phone said, you know, they've been talking to. Come. 
Uh, I, mean, if we, I haven't spoken to, um, I don't even know him personally, but if somebody said I should have a chat with uh, Kano while he was in uh, exile, yes, I would, absolutely. If he called me, I would respond, I would return the call, I would chat and uh, discuss what he thinks he's doing. I would tell him, listen, uh, stop all your, all this assault on police stations. They are human beings. Why are you slaughtering them? I mean, or why are you ordering your people to slaughter? Are you involved in that? So they're looking for sponsors uh, everywhere. And so I'm quite sure that there are sponsors, there are people who support uh, them. But we've heard this before. We heard about sponsors for Boko Haram. And we heard that, oh yes, we've got a list of them and they're all going to be brought up uh, in court very soon. They'll all be named. I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a name. I haven't seen anybody arraigned yet. Maybe it happened. I'm sorry, I'm not always there. I'm not afraid with always going on, so let me not lie against myself. But I wouldn't be surprised if faster than we've seen the arraignment of the sponsors of Boko Haram, of the bandits, of the Fulani has been faster than we've ever witnessed that we will see absolute revolutions galore accused, alleged sponsors of uh, uh, both uh, iPod and uh, Iboho, probably even their own relations. You will see. So are you uh, saying that Nigeria should, even if they are able to stop Sunday Boho, for instance, stop Namdekanu, Nigeria should be prepared for more Sunday Bohos and more Namdekanus to rise up and, uh, and continue the struggles of this one? I'm like. saying they're already there. I don't want this government to deceive itself. They're already there. It's not Igboho who's the issue. It's not Kanu who's the issue. It's a collective distrust, disenchantment, that's the word I want, collective disenchantment with the conduct of this regime. And that's why I say it can only redeem itself, it can only reverse this downhill uh, course it's embarked upon by now coming clean, trying to open a totally new page. Even forget the past. And let me use this opportunity to say this. And it's in response to some of the statements that have been made by some governors from a certain part of the country and some politicians. Nobody's saying that this problem began with Buhari. Nobody's saying it began with this government. Literally every president post the military era has committed lamentable uh, lamentable crimes against the people, either through neglect or through action. Hardly any governor, uh, any president is free of the charge of, shall we say, encouraging killings, massacre, for instance. Hardly any. Hardly any president is being uh, is innocent of anti-democratic actions, very often avoidable, whether in terms of withholding revenues, which are mandatory for the various states, interference, uh, or during elections. And I, I want to advise people, please let people stop making invidious comparisons, because if we want to open the chapter of governance malfeasance of every president we've had since the military was supposed to have left the state, we won't get to any productive, proactive remedial activity. So I'm willing to say, let's just, you know, push uh, all that aside and say, how do we move on from here? Uh, and so uh, I want all this uh, business, we met this, and we do this by the self-excusing by Boko Haram. Yes, thank you. Take it for granted. You did not create Boko Haram. We accept it. You did not create uh, um, Mayeti Allah. But what did you do about it? That is the question. Or what should you, should you do from here on? It's the only way we'll save our sanity and also make the slightest progress. Otherwise, as I said before, all this language, all this discussion will be purely academic when, as the, the saying goes, hits the fan.
Professor Wale Shoyinka, thank you so much for your time today.